Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to reveal a call to action in a sticky state with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to head over to this blog post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So if I scroll down here, you're going to notice that there's an area here where we can download this template and install it on our website. All right, so here's the area here. So I've already gone ahead and added my email address. And as soon as you add your email address, you're going to notice this button here, which says download the files. All you have to do is to click here on download the files and the files now are downloaded onto your computer. The next step now is to unzip that file. So I'm going to click here, show in Finder and my files are here in my Finder. So what I'm going to do next now is to go to my website and then I'm going to uh, come back and revisit my folder so I can get that file. So here on my website, I'm going to uh, come all the way down here to Divi, hover over here and then click on Divi library. Next, you want to uh, import the file that we've just downloaded. So I'm going to click here on import and export, click on import. And now we have to choose the file. So let me just show you quickly where this file is. So as you can see here, this is my downloads folder. So what you want to do is to uh, unzip the file, which was this one here. So if I double click, this now has opened up my uh, file. So all I have to do now is either to navigate to this file on my computer or I can just drag it over here just like that. Next, I'm going to click on import DV builder layouts. And now this is going to import this file. Excellent. So now that my file has been imported, pretty much I am ready to set it all up on my website. So you can see here it's in my library. So the next step now is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. Okay. Let's give this page a title. So let's just call this uh, tutorial. Click on use DV builder. Okay. So what we're going to do now is to either choose from a template or we can build this from scratch. So I'm just going to say start building. But of course, this can be used uh, pretty much on an existing page or on a brand new page. So now I'm going to click on this plus button and we are going to add from library because remember that file that we saved was saved in our Divi library. OK, so I'm going to click here on add from library and here we can see our sticky column call to action. So I'm going to click on that. And now you can see it has been imported. All I have to do now is to come over here to the top and delete this uh, section, which is entered by default. And now we have our design. OK, so what we need to do now, because obviously this uh, template is based on our design. So let's go through and see how you can go in and change this and customize it to make it fit your design. So the first thing you want to do is to come over here to your module settings for our title here and our title can be changed just here. Next, let's say you want to change the colors or even the font itself. All you have to do is to click here on design. Click here on this paintbrush tool and we can change our font here. Now, as you know, I like Poppins, so let me choose Poppins here as my font and you can see here it is uh, updated. And let's say we want to change our colors. You can just come over here and you can change your color to whatever color you want. OK, so I'm just going to uh, leave it as it is. Now, here we have uh, this divider here. You can either delete it by just clicking here on this bin icon or you can just uh, change the color if you need to. Next, um, we have uh, this information here on the right. So let's go into our module and see how we can customize this. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon and this now is going to take me to my blurb settings. So this is where we have course one and we have our title and we also have the description here and we also have image and icon. So this is where you can come over here and change your icon. So let's say you want to go with uh, this one right here. As you can see, it's updating just like that. Now let's head over to the colors. So I'm going to click here on design. So we can start here with our image and icon and uh, change our color. So let's say I go with that. And then here we also may want to change the title. So I'm going to change this to Poppins like that. And then we can also change our paragraph. Now notice I'm clicking here on this brush tool. So now I can change my font, change this to Poppins as well. And we can also change the size here if we need to. 
But as you can see, this is quite straightforward to do. All right, so now that we've changed that, let's see, when I go ahead and save, I can just save it like that. And this has been updated. And we can also do the same to course two and course three. Now let's head over to this area here. So this is where we want to uh, take a look at our design and the images that we have here. So I'm going to click on my row settings. And uh, if I come over here to background, we notice that our background has not been applied here to the main background. So we need to go to our column background. So here we can click on the third tab. And this is where we have this image that we have here in the background. So you can change this image by uh, clicking here. And in your library, if you have other images, you can just navigate to your images and update it that way. So let's say I choose this one here, click upload image. You can see here that the image has been updated now on my design. Okay, so let's go in and choose another one. Now, I just noticed that if you use an image which is quite small, it will not look great because um, it will not show it in high quality. So you want to make sure that you use an image that is uh, high quality. So let's, let's try this one here. So if I click upload an image, now you can see that this is much better and pretty much it's covering uh, our area there. Okay, so let's say we're happy with that. I can just hit save. And then next, I need to work on uh, this design here, our call to action. Okay, so to go to our call to action, we can click here on this gear icon. And now you can see here, this is our main call to action. So there's a few things that we can do here. I could come over here to my background, go to my gradient. So here is uh, where I can play around with my colors as well. So if I click here, you can see this is our main color. So let's say I want to go with black, but the black needs to have some transparency. So I can just add my transparency like that. And then my second color here could be perhaps a solid black, just like that, or it can be pretty much another color. So it depends what color you want to use. Ideally, you want to use a color that matches your branding because that is very, very important. I'm just going to add a little bit of transparency here as well so I can see a little bit of uh, my main image there. Okay, so now that we have our colors all set, I can come now to my design. And uh, over here, we have uh, this uh, main title. So we can go in and change the title. So let's use our font again. And we can change the color of our font just by clicking here. So it depends what colors you want to use. Okay, so next let's head over here to our button. And as you can see here, our custom styles for button are activated. So this is again where we can play around with um, our colors, our fonts. So again, for consistency sake, I'm going to choose Poppins. And we can choose now the colors. So for this design, I'm just going to leave it as it is because it looks very uh, nice as it is. So let's say I'm happy with that. I can go ahead now and save. And now everything has been centered. And when I scroll, you can see now that it fades off. When I scroll to the top and then when I start coming down, it now shows. But of course, the design looks much better when I um, exit the Visual Builder. So let's save the page and exit the Visual Builder. Okay, so now when we scroll, you notice that uh, nothing is there yet. And then when I get to um, part of the page, now my call to action shows. And here we go. Oh, there's something I forgot to mention. So let me go back here and show you how to add the link to your shop now button. Okay, so to uh, add our link, you want to click here on this gear icon to go into our call to action. So here we just need to go to link. And then this is where you need to add the link to the URL where you need to go to. Okay, so this is where you add it. And pretty much that's about it. And also, if you want to change your title for your button, you can also change it here on the text. So you could say, instead of saying shop now, you could say download now, like that. And uh, that becomes your call to action. Excellent. So when you're done with that, you can just save and exit the Visual Builder. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.